Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats as our ceremony will be commencing shortly. Please check that all mobile phones are switched off and as this is a formal occasion, we request that the only form of acclamation be appropriate applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this year's Centenary Heights Year 12 graduation. My name is Elijah Matheson and along with my fellow school captain Chelsea Golding and vice captains Taryn and Sophie, we'll be hosting today's graduation ceremony. We extend a very warm welcome to you, our virtual audience, who sadly are unavailable to be here with us today, but you know we're out there supporting us as always. We appreciate the part you have played in our educational journey. We also welcome the staff members that are able to attend and unable to attend today. Thank you for your attendance and support of us here on our final day of school. Thank you for sharing the support and occasion with us. And of course, we especially welcome our graduating class of 2020. Before we begin, I would like to ask Dakota Anderson to say the welcome to country. Good morning, students, teachers, and members of our community. My name is Dakota Anderson, and I'm a proud Aboriginal woman from the tribes of Waka Waka and Woolly Woolly mobs from Idesville, Sherberg, and the surrounding areas. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet on today, the Jawa and Gaibal people. I'd also like to take a moment to pay our respects to the elders past and present, for they hold the memories, traditions, and knowledge of Indigenous culture. Thank you. Please now be upstanding for the national anthem. to celebrate our schooling life, 12 years in which we have sought and obtained further knowledge and skills and developed friendships that will remain important to us for the rest of our lives. As we move on to further study or employment, travel or industry-based training, we will be grateful for the firm educational foundation given to us by Centenary Heights State High School. It is now my pleasure to call upon our wonderful principal, Miss Mary Ann Walsh, to share some thoughts with us. Please make her welcome.
The morning of, uh, on the day of the 2020 graduation of our Year 12 students, I wish to focus on gratefulness. And uh, yesterday, you learned all about that uh, with the wonderful Ross Saville. But as principal, my gratefulness to our Year 12s, their families and teachers and support staff and also to your good selves. I ask you to reflect while I'm speaking to those in your life who played a part in the fact that you are here today and very successfully here today, your broad support group. In 2017, at the annual event for families we have with our Year 12 students with disability, it was student Merrick Woodward in his wonderful speech who explained what he thought a good school was. And I quote with his permission directly from his written speech. Now, when we think about what has been the best, I would have to say that it was this school. This place is always trying to stay clean and have good behaviour, and those things are important. But the fact remains that this school was the best, trying to get us through troubles at home or giving us good times. But the greatest so far was how it lifted us up to try to grant us our futures. Along the same lines as Merrick, the musician and teacher, George Sampson, describes his view of what a good school is. A good school should be a place for the less fortunate, just as a good home is for the more fortunate. A place where there is work, but also laughter. A place where there is law, but also grace a place where there is justice, but also love. And so I invite you, graduating class, as I speak on for these minutes, to think about Merrick and George Sampson and see where that sits with you in this extremely important time for you. So let me move now to these peoples on whom you might reflect, our families. So I speak directly to our families, Welcome to a new phase for your child. It's a tough one because you know you'll be letting go a little bit more, just like when they started in year seven. It was the prophet Khalil Gibran who said, speak to us of children. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are set forth. And that is you. As your children move on from us, I wish to thank you, families, most sincerely for your cooperation and support, for the work our staff and I do at Centenary Heights State High School in our role as second parents. Your support, for the clear and consistent stance we take in ensuring our mantra of safety, respect and learning, and not just words, rather a way of doing daily business, your support has been exceptional. Such a stance provides the platform for your child to work to his or her capacity in the knowledge that mediocrity as a person and as a learner is not an option. My thoughts are with you today especially if this graduating child is your baby, the loss of all things that come with a school routine, lunches, buses, homework. I often think at these times that it's usually more felt by parents. I acknowledge here also, and I'm so grateful for our staff. Over the years, your subject teachers, your teacher aides, pastoral care teachers, heads of year, deputy principal, guidance officers, support services staff, office staff, all of whom, students, you have built varying degrees of strong relationship. All staff in the room today, would you please stand? <clears throat> and students do have a good look at what is very, very and has been very strong support for you. You will know that better than I. And as I speak and as they stand, I acknowledge especially the work in this your year 12 year of our assistant head of year, Tiff Beck, 
a major task to organise so very well so many large celebration events and done so with such ease and skill. In the book, Teachers Change Lives, and I include their teachers and our non-teaching staff because we're very much on the same page at our school with that. It is written that most of us can recall teachers who changed our lives. Teachers who arrived to teach us what we needed to know just when we seemed to need to know it. The amazing thing about such people is that they change us so that we become ourselves. And it was only for me three weeks ago on a Saturday morning as I was clearing some emails that I read of the passing of one of my favourite teachers. And the tears ran down my face and it's all those years ago. Thank you, staff. <laughs> I suggest to you that this may occur in many ways. A teacher looks at you and there is a connection. Lends you a book, shares a conversation with you in the yard, stays after school to help you not just hearing you, but listening to you. No teacher can make a student learn. Effective teachers, however, create the situation where learning happens. Life-changing teachers remain with us as guiding spirits that connect us to our lives. And our student leaders at one of our term meetings earlier in the year were very clear with what makes a good teacher. One who understands how to teach students well and finds how they best learn. One who is passionate, one who is fun and strict, one who is kind, nothing seems ever too much trouble. Someone who believes in you and generally wants the best for you. And so to you now, our graduate students, because you are part of the peoples on whom you might reflect. I acknowledge here to my right our school captains and vice captains of the year 2020, and I speak directly to you. What a pleasure and a privilege to learn from you, to be instructed by you, and to share your company over time. Finally selected by your peers, could not have asked for better. To our members of our student leadership group who are here in year 12, again, once again, your wisdom, uh, your reflections, do not doubt for a minute how strong you are in guiding the way that this school runs, as it should be. And my thanks to you. And to all of you, you have not solely been learners, I can assure you. Without knowing it, you have been our teachers. All those people who stood up here, all of those people who are not here in this room today, you've been our teachers, as that should be. As we watched you grow, there is not one parent, carer, grandparent or staff member who has been involved with you, who could say that you have not taught us something about ourselves and our roles. Staff will comment, I'm sure at times I say to them, if we ever think that we've arrived in our profession, we've actually departed. So once again, your instruction of us has indeed been resounding. And it was the writer, F.W. Robertson, who said, there is a past which is gone forever, but there is a future that is still our own, and that is you. I would hope together at our school that we've laid a platform for your future, where you will be one who is. In the poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson's words, silly, honest, kind, that you are able to give and receive love, that you are responsible in your decision-making, that you are courageous enough to reach out for help when the times are tough, and you feel like you are not coping. That you are mindful that your words and actions are a reflection of who you are. That you are able to laugh with others and most importantly yourself. And that you are a giver back to your community. And in 2012, it was graduate then Ashley Gehrig, now a successful physiotherapist, wrote in our school magazine about her impending graduation. Don't cry because it's over, be glad that it happened. And so I can promise you, graduating class of 2020, that I speak on behalf of every staff member at Centenary Heights State High School when I say that we are most certainly glad that you happened and that our paths have crossed. It has indeed been our pleasure and our privilege. Stay safe, stay safe and live well.
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walsh, for that wonderful message. I would now like to introduce, for the last time, the senior music class with a final word from the year 12s. Please make them welcome. We're performing I Lived by One Republic. Um, it's been a tough year, but we really wanted to celebrate the good times with you, and we hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you.
Thank you to the Year 12 mu music students and to Miss Christy Parker for her valuable input in the pr presentation of that performance. I would now like to invite Mr. Head of Year, Mrs. Jody Beecham, to the stage to give us her perspective on Grade 12. Welcome to our special guests and staff here today. Welcome to our families and friends watching from afar. However, the most special welcome, of course, is to our class of 2020. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off, off and away. But before you do, think back, not too far, back to the year that was 2015, when the world united in solidarity to welcome refugees with open arms to the time we legalised same-sex marriage and began initiatives to limit climate change. And finally, back to a time when corona was simply just a beer. But most importantly, the year the first ever preppies became the first ever year sevens at high school. And just across the courtyard in our hall, many of you sat, eager and enthusiastic and perhaps a little nervous. And just as you watch me now, you watch Miss Walsh then to hear from her the values and expectations that make us who we are at Centenary and our hopes and aspirations for you during your time with us. That you will learn to show the good in you in all that you do. That you will contribute acts of kindness where if we all give a little, it adds up to a lot. Where the small things matter and the standard we walk past is the standard we accept. That you will always strive to be your very best and when mistakes are made, which they will be, from there you will learn and grow and continue to learn again. And so off you went. The first ever group to walk through the new hallowed halls of W Block. The first ever group to survive the wrath that is Galligan's Island. The first group to be grinding handball in the W Block courtyard. And from there, on and on you travelled. A six year journey through camps and O'Connell games, carnivals and gala days, musicals and productions, free dress and red food, gold levels and end of year trips, special events and a 50th year anniversary, work experience, traineeships, tutorials, excursions, and so much more, including staff versus students games, of which we note the staff reign supreme against the year 12s this year. And here you are now in 2020, having lived and breathed the expectations and values of Centenary Heights, and by being here today and proud to graduate, you have achieved our hopes and aspirations and perhaps in any other year, that would be the end. But this is not a normal year, and you are definitely not a normal group. As your senior years began, you relished the label of guinea pigs. The first preppies, the first year sevens, the first seniors through a new QCE with acronyms galore, ATA, ARA, IA, EA, ISMG. And at our 2020 senior badge ceremony, Mrs Wilson highlighted with you this guinea pig label and promoted the guinea pig traits of intelligence and memory. We might just wait and see the external results for the verdict on that one. But most importantly, we celebrated with you guinea pigs as social animals that thrive in groups, always protecting their pack. We took it one step further and highlighted these traits in the context of Fru's footy and the Premiership quarter, knowing Mr Van Dee would have loved this footy analogy. Go Tigers. Hey, Corin. We considered the idea of Worrell's world, a wormhole only the brave should travel. Then a Wilson drama or two with the curtains opening for all of you. And finally, a Dr. Zeus's story time, celebrating the joy of all the places you'll go. But then we got hit hard. And it was not, oh, the places you'll go, but oh, the places you cannot go. 
You can't go to Grandy or the movies or the gym. You can't go to training or play any sport. And for many, it was the end to part-time work. No restaurants or cafes and definitely no clubs. You can't just hang out with your friends or visit a mate's place. And definitely no chance of the afters at Mary's. And at some point, amidst it all, you couldn't even come to school. However, since that time, it has not been, oh, the places you can or cannot go, but truly, oh, how much you all have grown. You have emerged from your guinea pig labels to be the cohort of 2020 that will always be remembered and never forgotten. The cohort that are, in fact, the pioneers of a pandemic. No other cohort will be remembered like you. No other group has grown as much as you. This year has seen you develop, like no others, the traits of strength, flexibility and resilience. Traits that will guide you from here, no matter the journey you may take or the bumps along the road you may encounter. You have shown the strength to believe in yourself and all that you do. The flexibility to adapt to an ever-changing environment, no matter what twists and changes may occur. And the trait of resilience and the ability to bounce back and fight to succeed, no matter the circumstances, be that COVID or not. This year has seen you truly value the notion of community, to step out from a self-centred focus and recognise the importance of all those around you, to position yourself like true guinea pigs and protect the most vulnerable, to recognise that every small step and act that you take can truly make a difference. As a cohort, you showcase this, surpassing all others, with your efforts at the world's greatest shave and lifeline can appeal. And we hope that you truly realise the impact each of you can have on our communities, both near and far, as you move beyond the gates of Centenary today. And in a year of isolation, you have learnt the value of connections and the importance of maintaining relationships and checking in with each other. In a tech-savvy world, tools such as group chats, FaceTime and Zoom have been key to maintaining connections. However, despite the emails and videos, you did miss us, just as we missed you. And what you shared with us on your return is the importance and value of our physical day-to-day -day and face-to-face -face contact that no social media format can ever replace. Please remember this as you leave us today and take every opportunity to initiate and maintain these connections wherever you can. The most important learning, however, for us all in a 2020 COVID year has been that of the value of family. At a time where seniors generally try to spread their wings and often spend more time away from home, being here, there and everywhere, in the time of restriction and lockdown, family has become your rock. And the importance of keeping your family safe has been paramount like at no other time before. Many families have done it tough at this time. And while you may have thought you have suffered through one too many dad jokes, or may have felt nagged way too many times like, wake up, have you signed in yet? Already knowing that you have sent an automatic timed reply to PCG and are just hoping for a few extra Zs. Maybe you endured too many board games or Netflix shows like Downtown Abbey rather than Breaking Bad. But regardless of your experience, through it all, no matter what, your family has been there to support you, to guide you and to love you unconditionally through the uncertain times of 2020. And in any other normal year, at the end of this graduation ceremony, you would rise from your seats full of raw and fresh emotions, only to be wrapped in the arms of your family where they would whisper and share with you, and only you, a very special message. While your families cannot be physically present here today, they are definitely here in spirit. And they celebrate with us your journey to this point and have shared with us a special message for each one of you.
Take with you the special moments and memories for your, from your time at Centenary. Take with you the traits of strength, flexibility and resilience. Take with you the values of community, connections and family. Take with you the friendships and relationships you have formed here with us. Take with you, from all of us here at Centenary, our support, our best wishes and our love. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off, off and away. And oh, all the places you can go. Congratulations, take care and fly high, our guinea pigs of 2020 and our pioneers of a pandemic. Well done. Thank you, Ms Beecham, for that insightful reflection on 2020. Um, yeah, I can see the few people in the crowd crying, so yeah, well done, Miss. Um, <laughs> uh, we now move on to the formal section of today's ceremony, the presentation of the graduation certificates to the seniors of 2020. I now call on Miss Walsh, our three year 12 heads of year, Miss Wilson, Miss Beecham and Miss, Mr Worrell, and the year 12 pastoral care group teachers to assist with the presentation of the certificates. To commence the presentations, I now call upon the partial care group teacher from 12A, Mrs Hayley Harmon. Please hold your applause until the end, until the full group is assembled at the front of the stage. The graduates for 12A are Nasmus Abia. Bryn Achilles. Saxon Allen. Madeline Heaven. Benjamin Kamel, Carmela Leonardi, Emily Manteet, Latai Matapa. Lee Melville. Darcy Nichols. Michael Schilt. Jasper Schultz. Jonty Smith. Lachlan Smith. Shannon Smith. Hayden Wilcock, and Ethan Wyatt. Please join me in congratulating the 12A graduates.
The graduates for 12B are Mitchell Anderson, Anaya Burt, Grace Callow, Nicholas Fitch, Jacob Fleming, Elwyn Huang, Alex Longford, Holly Lowe, Sophie Lyon, Nyalowat Match, Harrison Manthe. Marie Bidenay. Nengela Majuma. Benjamin Scholl. Zachary Struess. Sophie Tang. Caitlin Wallace. McLean Wallace. Lachlan Watson. Please join me in congratulating the 12B graduates. The graduates for 12C are Moshe Boloy, Lin Shane Shen, Peter Shen. Paige Fraser. Kai Hess. Connor Jewell. Gabrielle Lay. T. 
Chelsea Makalka. Daniel Matthews. Honika Murata. Jessica Pinkney. Connie Q. Holly Russon. Um, Shayla Saul. Catherine Tao. James Thompson. Chloe Taylor. Selena Wania. Sathmi Waniara Rarachi. And Janita Wiseman. Please join me in congratulating the 12C graduates. The graduates for 12D are Ryan Boyce, Amy Brennan, Kanish Chandwani, Sean Freeman. Lucas Hohenhaus. Hayden Jago. Tristan Klein. Megan Lang. Dilshan Mickelson. Trinity Mitchell. Nazgul Nazari. Corin Nugturin. Shelby Raphael. Nicole Rint.
Shakela CB. Emily Stenzel. Carl Tabby Franca. Manat Vidding. Please join with me in congratulating. Please join with me in congratulating the 12 D graduates. The graduates for 12E are Julia Brereton, Cody Bunn, Hia Chowdhury, Dylan Fry, Taryn Gullapathy, Brianna Hannaford, Olivia Hanslow. Alex Jopling. Abish Lumbau. Joel Martin. Zaid Matthews, Chloe Mitchell, Lachlan Sharp. Hansaja Tenakoon Alyssa Williams Please join me in congratulating the 12E graduates. The graduates of, for 12F are Aaron Bilton, Ray Borg, Caitlin Bowes, Sarah Bowie, Rose Burke,
Jared Fine. Chelsea Golding. Finlay Harmon. Elizabeth Hunt. Kiralee Jeffrey. Hannah McSparron. Amy Moran. Taylor Morrow. Lily Pedrick. Shelby Rosentreter. Zach Ross. Hannah Sheridan. Sammy Shine. Emma Simons. Matilda Stinson. Alicia Tanner. Cody Whitehouse. Please join me in congratulating the 12F graduates. Thank you. The graduates for 12G are Lucy Achen, Rose Appio. Ali Boll. Dylan Basodi Nagy. Conrad Crow. Kavishi Dasanayaki. Johan Demmer. Lachlan Fraser. Samantha Friedman. Sam Gilchrist. Vincent Gilks. Ashley Hess. Sam Henriksen. Aria Hermsichar. Flynn Hilton. Jake Iden. Eliza Karubandika. Elijah Mathewson. Zachariah McCulloch. Zoe McCurley Alt.
Connor Pearson. Hayley Roberts. Ott Tipperson. Ruth Uamana. Please join me in congratulating the 12G graduates. The graduates for 12H are Micah Adamson, Matthias Aiello, Ruby Aikes, Tyler Beecham. Ben Brochery, Ethan Callahan, Holly Chasini, Brittany Clark. Darcy Flanagan, Jeremy Kinney, Hunter Lee, Alyssa Mani, Thomas McGarry. Brody Ott, Meg Parrish, Gina Quilliam, Montana Robertson. Jordan Tan, Ryan Tan, Reuben Tolman, Lohan Vanderwalt. Aiden Wall, Mitchell Wilson, and Alan Yang. Please join me in congratulating the Year 12H graduates. to introduce the graduates for 12J. Brock Alexander.
Casey Coop. Emily Doran. Caleb Fidge. Pete Hamisher Chart. I'm out of order. Brody Hahn. Claire Lowry. Michael Madonis. Maddie McCann. Samir Mujib. Brooke Poole. Nick Pugh. Tegan Smith. Jasmine Willis. Callum Wielden. Please join me in congratulating the grade 12J graduates. Graduates for 12K are Ria Biscoccia, Jess Sizalka, Serena Cooper. Jake Iser, Sharice Ewing, Ava Fitzgibbon, Nicole Hobbins. Campbell Jennings, Alex Kays, Holly Lee, Sarah Mitchell. Bailey Moore, Harry Panitz, Lachlan Richards, Joshua Rummel. Lucy Silvone and Annitz. Jake Smith. Mitchell Smith.
Erica Snaith. Bridget Wainwright. Brendan White. Rocco Whiten. Wei Song Wong. Danielle Woodcock. Please join with me in congratulating the 12K, 12K graduates. Congratulations to all the Year 12 student graduates. We will now share some of our reflections of our time together and what lies ahead. I invite Taryn to begin our valedictory address. Good morning teachers, parents, and of course, Centenary's most courageous cohort to date. We made it. Despite the delays and un un unpredictability of this year, we're in fact coven here today to celebrate our very own graduation. And remember all the incredible feats we've achieved not only over this year, but over the last 13 years of schooling. Looking out at all of you, I can see that some of you are in your absolute element, some of us not so much. Nonetheless, we're all here today, though one might say we managed a better job at our year six transition. All jokes aside, the 13 year journey to get here today has not been an easy one, and everyone in this room should be immensely proud of their efforts. You had all experienced so many challenges already throughout your academic careers, and then 2020 happened. But without focusing too much on the recent events, one thing that I will say is that I've certainly admired how all of you seem to have taken the events of this year in stride. And one thing is for certain, if you can make it through that, you can make it through anything. There are many things I'm gonna miss. Everything from Matilda's amazing jokes to the bromance between Elijah and Jake. I wanna miss telling Nasmus to use the handbrake for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> as well as making sure Becky saves me a, a courtside seat when he's playing for the Celtics. And of course, how can I forget Jaunty's amazing hair? But like Dr. Seuss said, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. It has been an absolute privilege to grow up beside you over the past six years, and I hope you all take in comfort knowing we will always share the memories we've made here together. Thank you. Good morning and congratulations for graduating today. We are finally here on this day, Friday the 20th of November, 2020, the day our schooling careers come to an end. It makes me think of a quote I recently found that says fear is the number one killer of dreams. And I can't for one second look at you all and think that the fear of doing something will stop you from achieving your dreams. Some of us might have a fear of speaking out or speaking up or pursuing a certain pathway or future. But the way I see it is that there is no point fearing something that hasn't happened or something that may never even happen. For example, <laughs> grade 10 me decided to choose specialist math for the taster with Mr. O'Brien. And for the whole day and holidays leading up to it, I was panicked and nervous. And the few minutes before class, I was contemplating the best way to fake a heart attack because I thought for sure I'd just make him question like his faith in humanity. <laughs> and while that didn't happen and I got through that first week unscathed, I realized that I could have spent my holidays a little more wisely because there was absolutely no point stressing about it and I really should have just been looking forward to a new experience. This did not mean that I needed to be fearless, but rather I needed to be courageous and brave. And I will endeavor to carry a bit of that courage into my future, even though I totally dropped out after that first week. <laughs> 
And I'm sure all of you have a similar anecdote from your six years at high school, from seven to 12, that can remind you that you are fearless, or at least can seem fearless. And I hope, like me, you can carry that into your future as well. This is our time, our time to take risks and to make mistakes and to learn from them, to step into new experiences, not without fear, but, without, but with courage. Be sure to be thankful to all those around you, especially the staff and teachers and friends that helped you be fearless. Thank you. Good morning. To the staff here with us today, to the friends and families watching along at home, and most importantly, good morning to the graduating class of 2020. We've made it. As we gather here this morning to celebrate our achievements, the excitement is almost palpable as we await in anticipation for what is next. Though our lives have always been our own, it is only now, as we leave the structure and stability of school, that we prepare to embrace a freedom unbeknownst to us yet, a freedom to decide how the rest of our lives will unfold. It was Hilary Rodham that said, the only tool we have ultimately to use is our lives. This quote strikes me as it highlights to us that if we wish to make a difference in this world and live meaningful lives, then we have the power in ourselves, and I believe, responsibility to do so. If it is the way in which we live our life that matters, then we should be strong in our values, but not rigid in our opinions. Now, when I say that, I do not mean let your opinions be steered by the ebbs and flows of what is popular. In fact, I argue strongly against that, but rather be critical of your beliefs. Challenge your opinions often and be willing to reconsider as you grow and learn, because no matter how genuine your intention, all of us are prone to being wrong sometimes. If we wish to live meaningful lives, we should think often of others, as we all need each other more than we know. In an existence as privileged as our own, it can be easy to forget that the life we live is an incredibly lucky one. So avoid apathy and indifference, and instead choose to act with empathy and compassion. Graduating class, before I left you today, I wanted to leave you with some strong parting words, wisdom that I hope you can all take with you as you prepare for what is next. But as someone who is just as nervous, just as excited, and just as uncertain about what that future holds, I wasn't sure if I was qualified to give such potent advice. So instead, I wanted to share with you the words of someone that I admire greatly and love so dearly, which is my dad. And he's just one of the many people that I'm so incredibly grateful for and that has helped me be here today. So these are the words he wrote for me on my 17th birthday, and I hope they'll resonate with you here today. As the precipice of adulthood sees you poised to embrace a world offering untold adventure and learning, do not hastily discard the lens in which you interpret the current moments that you are blessed with. Albert Einstein once said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, the other is as though everything is. I hope that throughout life you view this world with nothing but profound wonder, because I promise you that indeed everything is a miracle. Embrace this day and all that follow it with joy, love and passion. Class of 2020, I could not be more grateful to each and every one of you for the last six years, and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. We as humans often focus on our first rather than our last. We remember our first day of grade seven, the first time we spent our lockers and our first classes. I think we can all agree that the, um, the class of 2020 has had the most first. First preppies, first year sevens at high school, first ATAR, first pandemic, lockdown seniors, homeschooling, sanitizing, awards afternoon. But we often forget our last. The last time we played handball, the last time we got tuck shop, and the last time we borrowed a book or that fateful last basketball dunk. We, <laughs> uh, we will remember today, however, as a day etched in history. The day we will never walk into a school classroom as a student again. We will also remember the funny moments. Things such as the chess casino, Tetris battles, guinea pigs, Mr O'Brien cult followings, the grade 7 handball competition uh, with Patty and Lynn Shane, the time Clay Hodder split Emily, head, Emily Stenzel's head open in the Hunger Games, uh, Mr. Dowling lovingly calling his students buffheads, trying to guess Mr. Osborne's age, 35, and, and his first name, probably not Jesse, and uh, the time Dilshan Mickelson tripped and face planted into the basketball court fence, but yeah, I can't really talk. <laughs> and then somewhere in the middle of it all, in the craziness, craziness of life, it hit us. Maybe during lockdown or at our grandparents' funeral, or maybe when we wave goodbye to our big brother leaving home. 
We realise that these days are more than just um, games, uh, homework and pimples. This is called life and this one is ours. Complete with moments of overwhelming happiness, the deepest of sadness and everything in between, we have a life. You've been given your life and no one else has your version. You'll never meet anyone else who has your exact same blend of genes, passions and interests. Your life will never be lived by anyone else. As soon as one day has passed, voila, here comes another. Life is racing past, and if we aren't careful, you'll look up and our shot at it will have passed. I believe this year's circumstances have taught us a few lessons, and maybe the first one is that life will throw us a few curveballs and we can cope with that. Who would have thought that when we started year 2020, we'd have the year that we've had? Our journey has taught us to question how we've done stuff and to think out of the box. It's made us one very tight-knit group. Maybe also we've realised that it's not good enough just for us to do well, but maybe we want to do good. We want to live a life that matters. We want to live a life in such a way that the world would be glad we did. Live a life that outlives our own. To leave a legacy, leave something behind. A life of last that truly matter. The only way that's going to happen is to realise that life isn't all about me or you. Um, all the striving to get ahead, to make a name for ourselves, friendships or accumulating stuff. Who dies with the most toys is a bit of a uh, ridiculous way to live our life. Life is actually about investing in others and making a difference. By a single act of kindness or acknowledgement, we might change the course of someone else's life and, ma and maybe not change the world, but the corner of the world in which we operate. We have a great example from our teachers here in front of us today. Teachers who go the extra mile and don't give up on appallingly hopeless chemistry students. Beecho. Teachers who are encouragers, motivators, carers, shapers, cheerers, comedians, insight givers. We have a principal who typifies this as well. Things like picking up papers on Athletics Day to supporting students throughout their pathway. Walshie, you really are a legend. Grade 12s, it's been an absolute pleasure being one of your leaders in 2020 and living life with you for the past six years. Live a life that matters. Live lives that enhance others' lives. Make your mark on your corner of the world, grab opportunities with both hands and live life to the absolute fullest. Make every last worth your while. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Our year would not have been possible to get through without the help of a number of very special people. So we would like to invite to the stage Mrs. Wilson, Mrs. Beecham, Mr. Worrell, Miss Frew, and Miss Walsh, as well as Hayden Jago, Hensaja, Sarah Mitchell, Dylan Fry, and Matilda Stinson, as well as Rhea Biscotcho to offer our special thanks. Good morning everyone, we're here, the day that seemed so distant six years ago and we could not have done it without our devoted principal, Miss Walsh. Where do I even begin? It's not like I've spent the majority of my time at Centenary up in the naughty chair in her office. <laughs> Miss Walsh has always encouraged us to strive to be the best people we can be and that after this very day we are more than equipped to not just exist in society but to live it to always give with our thoughts and actions towards others and to always stand up for what we know to be right. We have been so fortunate that you have shared these values and lessons, these snippets of wisdom that we, that we will have with us for the rest of our lives. Miss Walsh's dedication has seen centenary grow to astonishing heights. Even in just these six years, so much has changed around our school. Faces have come and gone, a new curriculum has taken over our lives. But Miss Walsh has always been there for us. What I will remember most about Miss Walsh are her acts of kindness, support and care. Whether it's coming in over the weekend to pull weeds out, washing and returning your lost lunchbox, thanks Miss Walsh, <laughs> or her cheerful greetings to every single one of us as we file through the entrance of the hall for a Tuesday parade. And this is just a select few of her kind acts. These subtle gestures, the one percenters that not everyone notices, 
are all the difference in making Centenary Heights the best possible place to come to every day. So thank you, Ms Walsh, for being committed and passionate about our education, for always being kind and for being our principal. We are extremely grateful for our times together and we will miss you. Good morning, students, teachers and parents. I first got to know Ms. Fru back in 2017 when she helped us start the Centenary Heights State High School Chess Club. In fact, I don't think it's an exaggeration, exaggeration to say Ms. Fru is the driving force behind the chess club. <laughs> We've participated in three chess tournaments since 2017 and Ms. Fru has always been the first one to arrive at the venue and always the last to leave late at night. She celebrated alongside us when we won our games and consoled us when we lost. And uh, trust me, you especially needed that consolation when you drew a game with six queens on the board, which is pretty bad. Anyways, we came sixth in the 2017 Toowoomba Interschool Chess Tournament. However, thanks to Ms. Prue's constant support and guidance, one of our teams managed to come third in the tournament this year. As one of our deputy principals, Ms. Freer's duties and responsibilities extend not only to the chess club, but also to the entire school. Uh, how, however, despite a heavy workload, she has always made time for us. As I'm sure most of you have seen, Ms. Fru has attended almost all Tuesday period for study sessions and after school tutorials to see how we were going. And she would often come chat with us during break times. She was also present for almost all our external exams, wishing us luck prior to the exams and congratulating us after them. Ms. Fru has always been easily approachable, understanding and willing to lend an ear. She is truly one of the most kindest, dedicated, and passionate people I've ever known. So on behalf of Centenary High State High School Chess Club and the class of 2020, I'd like to express my heartfelt gratitude to you, Ms. Fru, for everything that you've done for us. 2020 has been a difficult year for all of us, but without your tireless behind the scenes effort, overcoming this year would have been a lot more challenging. Even though we may leave Centenary Heights today, we will always remember the positive impact you've made in our lives. So could we all please give Ms. Free a big round of applause. Uh, to the wonderful Mrs. Beecham, thank you. Thank you for all the extra time and money you spent on us as a grade 12 cohort. Uh, it is safe to say we wouldn't have been able to make it through the year without all the study rooms, tutorials, and extra help you organised for us, and particularly without all the food you provided. Thank you also for all the work you did as a head of year. We all thoroughly enjoyed the teachers versus students games you helped organise, though I'm still waiting for you to throw a dodgeball at me. <laughs> um, I won't make too much of a point regarding the bias refereeing, uh, but I will say there should have been a basketball game to even things up a bit. A uh, big thank you likewise from our chemistry class, uh, whether it's answering our questions with the seemingly obvious answers, trying to read my handwriting, uh, or giving us yet another set of practice exam questions for the back of our books. You really went the extra mile for us to get us prepared for the external exams, and I don't think we'll ever be able to thank you enough. Finally, thanks for just being you. You have shared many a laugh or story with all of us, something which we all appreciate greatly, and I'm sure you've played a part in many unforgettable memories throughout our time here. I, for one, remember way too much about organic chemistry after today. Um, so to one of the best teachers possible, we say thank you, Beecher. Hey, there we go. Um, so I was assigned the task to speak for Miss Wilson. So, Miss Wilson has not only perfected the recipe of a flawless macarons, which she learnt in Paris of all places, but she has also been one of the few people who have also perfected the art of teaching. Now, how has she done this, you ask? Well, I believe I have cracked the code. I like to call it the recipe of the perfect teacher. So all other teachers, take notes. 
Miss Wilson always comes with a tablespoon of thoughtfulness. One of the greatest moments of this that I can remember was only three weeks ago. Amidst the stress and anxiety that comes with an external chemistry exam, lo and behold, there she is, thoughtfully offering wrap lollies to each nervous student. Now at the time, and even now, this simple act of kindness may not seem profound, but it sure does capture a tangible glimpse into her immeasurable amount of generosity. The second most quintessential ingredient a teacher must possess is no doubt a dollop of dedication, one in which they are ready and willing without a second thought to devout hours of planning and investing in their students, whether in classes or year parades, like let's be real people. Just imagine the hours of work that went into those pioneer PowerPoints at the start of each year parade, showcasing her pride towards all students and their achievements, no matter how small. Also, a quick shout out for all the tireless work Miss Wilson put into creating the Year 12 DVD. Amazing. Can we give a round of applause just for that? <laughs> the final ingredient in the perfect teacher recipe is an endless flow of sporadic energy, which she emulates effortlessly in her teaching. This energy consequently leads to the addition of cups and cups of creativity such as the idea of guinea pigs, as well as her unique COVID at home challenges she invented not too long ago. The examples go on. So, on behalf of the entirety of our cohort, it is my absolute pleasure to sincerely thank you for your thoughtfulness, dedication, and unparalleled energy from our first day of year seven to our last day of year 12. Now, let me clarify, there is no such thing as a perfect teacher, but Miss Wilson sure does come close. Good morning, everyone. I would just like to give a huge thank you to our head of year, Mr. Worrell. Despite not being with our cohort in this journey, as long as some of the others, you have certainly made your presence known, not only through your unique fashion sense, but through your consistent work, devotion, and commitment towards making this year, despite its challenges, run as smoothly as possible. Your contribution towards our cohort this year, with things such as undertaking a key role in student leader meetings, consistent efficiency with the notices, and position position as a driving force in the constant battle to keep the kitchen clean, really this would not have happened without you, is widely appreciated. Your admirable commitment towards the students at this school is further demonstrated through the number of fascinating excursions and experiences that you have managed to pull off, such as the Meta Art Day and artistic workshops with other schools, which were immensely valuable and fun. So on behalf of Grade 12, I wish you the very best for the future, for less necessity for the chair game, and for no student to have to face the... Uh, mysterious Worrell world. <laughs> so please join me in a big round of applause for Mr. Worrell. You've been an excellent teacher. This may come as a little bit of a surprise, but I think Ms. Beck, of all people, deserves much thanks than any of us in our room for organizing all the formal and graduation, just making it fun for everyone. So I've been in Mrs. Beck's math methods class since grade 11, and Throughout the past two years, I got to appreciate how dedicated and hardworking she is towards everything she does. And to show my appreciation on behalf of the cohort, I wrote a poem <laughs> with a little help from my friends. And I hope you're all familiar with the poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, because I took a little inspiration from that. So here it goes. Twas the night before formal, when all was in slumber, but not Mrs. Beck. She was calculating every number. The silverware shined with the utmost care in hopes that tomorrow would never compare. The students were nestled, all snugged in their beds, while visions of graduation danced in their heads. Mrs. Beck, however, was not asleep like the others, chugging her sixth cup of coffee, the haziness mothers. Footsteps thump as she keeps everything in check. I knew in a moment that it must be Mrs. Beck. The ceremony begins with the utmost formality. Each name called out, finishing school soon becomes reality. When out on the lawn, the police stood still, with stern looks on their face as we walked up the hill. Six feet apart, she goes on to explain, keep the distance, I don't wanna be the one they blame. We danced the night away with happiness galore. 
Oh, look, even Miss Vex on the dance floor. As the night drew to a close, we can't begin to comprehend all Miss Beck has done to bring this memorable chapter to an end. She's a person everyone knows, so dedicated and kind. We could not be more grateful, all the cohort combined. And I heard her exclaim as she walks out of sight, happy graduation to all, and to all a good night. And in the words of Miss Beck, good talk. <laughs> Thank you all for what you have done for our cohort and for helping us make it to the end of our high school career. When we mark a very important milestone occasion, there is a very special cake to cut and share. I now have the pleasure in inviting to the front of our stage our student council president, Rio Biscocho, to cut the graduation cake on behalf of the graduating class of 2020. We will share the cake after the ceremony. No school gathering would be complete without the singing of the school song. I would invite everyone to stand and join us singing the school song. This year has seen many challenges. However, we are heartened by the fact that, although our families were not able to be here with us today, that you are all out there watching. This has made today a very special day for all of us and one that we'll, we will no doubt remember for years to come. Today would not have been possible without the help of the following people. Miss Lyndall Hegarty, Miss Kinnevin, Mr. Cole French, Miss Sharon Mathewson, Miss Rebecca Moore, Ms. Rosie Hegarty, and Ms. Susan Corbett. A big thank you goes to Ms. Tiff Beck for, for her organization. She has also played a key role in the organization of the badge ceremony earlier this year, as well as the formal tonight. As a token of our appreciation, we have a little gift for you. If you'd like to come up, oh, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you everyone for all the help with, with us throughout the year. We invite, invite you to collect a piece of our beautiful graduation cake as you exit. To those who are joining us for tonight's formal, we look forward to seeing you there. As is tradition, to conclude our ceremony today, the Year 12 students are asked to make their way from the auditorium under a guard of honor provided by our teachers. Year 12s, please wait until the guard of honor has been formed before commencing from the front row. Thank you. Can 12A please rise and make your way to the exits? Thank you. 